Well, greetings. Well, today we um, are looking at another topic that is uniquely uh, crafted for our local congregation. And again, uh, the principles uh, and, and the truths that we look at are still available or are applicable to uh, everyone that is listening. A second source of <laughs> distraction today is that if you hear construction noises, that's because there's construction going on in, in our, the back of our home. And uh, I can't ask uh, these people to stop working and sawing while I record. So we'll just have to bear with the distractions. The title of my message today, as you see from the description uh, on YouTube, is How to Be Certain in Uncertainty. And writing this sermon uh, really demonstrated to me um, how significant it is that the Holy Spirit is uh, in my life and is involved in the process of my preparing messages for you all each week. I was fully prepared uh, to use the New Testament book of James as my source text uh, this week. Uh, I had my text identified. I had uh, all my main points laid out and written out and ready to go. And I was about to begin typing. And uh, I found myself going into the New Testament book of 1 John just to track down a thought that had come into my mind. Now, if you had a bulletin from our worship service on Sunday, you would see that we are now in 1 John as my source text. And the question would be, how did that happen? I had all of my work done, all of my study, all of it outlined, and I end up in 1 John, not in James. How'd that happen? Well, that's because... God, the Holy Spirit, had a better outline for today's message uh, than I had. That's how, quite frankly. And that's a wonderful thing, to tell you the truth, because it's absolutely consistent uh, with the answer to the question I pose in my sermon title, how to be certain in uncertainty. In today's world, uncertainty abounds <clears throat> in every area of life. In, the national, in our national leadership, or more, fr more correctly, the lack thereof, uh, in world events with all that's going on in Israel, in the Middle East, in Ukraine, what is true and what is certain can be very hard to determine. Everyone has an agenda, and they put a spin on the available information to support that agenda, and truth is the victim, and uncertainty is the result. How do you find certainty in a world that is filled with uncertainty? For the Christ follower, when the world around us is uncertain and we don't know what to believe, there are certainties that give us confidence and peace and even joy. These certainties are found in our relationship with God. Despite all the appearances, God is absolutely sovereign and totally in control. History is not circular. History is linear. God is moving his eternal plan from creation to the beginning of eternity. And God has a purpose. God has a plan for the world, and for each of us as his children. Now, we saw part of that plan last week in John chapter 3, verse 17, when we talked about or the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And Jesus tells Nicodemus and us that God sent him, Jesus, into the world to save the world. He sent Jesus into this world to counteract the chaos and the uncertainty that sin brought into the world with Adam and Eve. Christ's followers can have peace and certainty in the midst of chaos and uncertainty in Jesus. 
You know, Jesus called Satan the father of lies, and so he is. The psalmist says all of God's words are true. Jesus said when he was here on earth, I am the way, the truth, the life. So in the final analysis, when you think about it, all that is either true or false originates in one uh, of two sources. It either comes from God, and it's true, or it comes from Satan, and it's not true. If you want truth, you turn to God and his word, the Bible. Everything else, everything else is questionable. Not lies necessarily, that's not what I said. Just questionable. You see, some uncertainty in life comes simply because we lack knowledge or we lack training. So now the issue becomes, where do you turn for knowledge? And where do you get training? On what can you, or of what can you be certain? What can you be certain of? Well, these are relevant and material questions. And the answers to these questions determine the credibility of our certainty. The verse that came to my mind was 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where Paul writes, to his protege, Timothy, he writes these words, all scripture, that means the entire Bible, is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God is saying here through the Apostle Paul that the scriptures will tell us where to turn for truth, for knowledge, and where to gain training so that we can be equipped for every good work. And the term good work there in Greek or in the original language means something that is spiritually good. That would be anything that fulfilled the will of God. The Bible teaches us what is right in terms of knowledge. It confronts what is wrong in terms of thinking and conduct. It can correct what is wrong. It, that is in terms of redirecting mistakes or bad decisions. And that clearly indicates that even Christ followers can make incorrect decisions. But all is not lost. We can always correct our mistakes if we turn and follow God's word. You know, the last time I looked, God is the only person or the only being that is perfect. Humans make mistakes. That is normal. And the Bible is here to guide us to do what is right, to correct those mistakes, if we learn from them, and if we turn back to the teachings of Scripture. Now, I see this presently in the context of the current uh, circumstances of uh, the local congregation that I pastor. We have the blessing and the challenge of being responsible for our own destiny for the first time in several decades. But we have not been left without uh, instruction and guidance because the Word of God, the Scriptures, are our book of discipline. John the Apostle puts it this way uh, in terms of trusting in Jesus in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. He writes, everyone who believes, which is a synonym for trust, that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. So born of God is John's way of referring to being born again, which Jesus teaches us is one of God's non-negotiables. You must be born again. Born again is where God gives us the Holy Spirit, and therefore we have a new life, a new nature, not a sin uh, background, but a, uh, 
spiritual sensitivity to do what God asks us to do. And it comes through the presence of the Holy Spirit. So here is um, the basis of our certainty in life. If we trust Jesus as to who he is and who he and, and what he says he can do or will do for us, we are certain that we are God's child. It reminds me of the woman at the well in John chapter 4, John's Gospel. She had a choice to make, and she made the choice to believe what Jesus claimed to be. He said he was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So how do we know this? How do we know that we are God's son? Well, as we said, the Apostle John says in that first verse, chapter 1, excuse me, chapter 5, first verse of First John, everyone who believes or trusts that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. The Apostle Paul teaches us the very same point in chapter 8 of his letter to the church at Rome. Romans 8, 16, he says, The Spirit himself, speaking of the Holy Spirit, testifies with our spirit, our soul, that we are God's child. God's Holy Spirit speaks to us and gives us certainty of our status as being a child of God. In verses 2 and 3 of our text, John gives us more ways to be certain. He writes, this is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God, one, and carrying out his commandments, two. So love and obedience for God and his commandments in Scripture are a source of certainty that we are born of God, that we are his child. Christ's followers are to love God and to obey his word. But there's more, and that, com they, 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 that comes from being uh, obedient to God's commandment. Verse 4 of our text, 1 John chapter 5, the Apostle John writes this, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Don't you just love that? In the, in the context of our national situation today, in our world situation, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. So if we find ourselves facing uncertainty for any reason, the primary remedy for us is to know who we are and whose we are. We are God's child and we belong to God's family. And as such, we can overcome the uncertainty that we face in the world, that the world produces. Well, remember I said that uncertainty can be legitimate, and it can. Uncertainty is not sin. Uncertainty, quite frankly, can be an indication of being wise. Because to recognize that you need information, you need knowledge, and you need training, is wisdom. It's smart. The issue is, where do you get that knowledge? Who do you turn to for truth? The Bible counsels us to turn to God, to trust him, to love him, and to obey him. Do you remember the promise that Jesus gave us in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 18? He says, I will not leave you as orphans. He's talking about going back to being with his father. His time on earth here is very near an end. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Our certainty is rooted in our relationship with God through faith in Jesus. It defines who we are and what we are to do. We are God's children and we are to do his will, his purpose. Well, there are a number of other things that Scripture teaches us that we can be certain about. Think of all the promises that God and Jesus made to humanity. We've already quoted two. But what about his promise to be with us to the very end 
of time and the beginning of eternity. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, or at least the second half of verse 20. He says, and I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I love that word always. Because this truth should change the way we think and the way we act, the way we live every day in a very practical way. Jesus is always here with us. So the question becomes, do you believe that? Do you trust that? Does that truth give you a sense of certainty and confidence? Well, here are several other things that we can be certain about that we find in Scripture, things that should change how we live and how we face the uncertainty in the world as Christ follows. We have an inheritance that is being kept for us in heaven by Jesus, and he will bring it with him when he comes to earth a second time. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We will see Jesus up close and personal, face to face. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. We will receive a crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And the final certainty that John offers us out of our text today is that the, the certainty that we will live eternity, eternally with Jesus in glory. 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. He says, I write you these things that we've just looked at and read, so that those of you who trust in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. This is a certainty. This is confidence that we approach God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. John says, and if you know this, that he hears us, whatever we ask, if it's according to his will, we know that we have uh, what we asked him for. The only qualifier there is that it's in accordance to God's will. I think that's a point we'll follow up on perhaps next week. Prayer and God's will. But these promises are uh, life-changing certainties. God is absolutely in control of everything. We have the certainty of his presence in our lives always. We have the certainty of his guidance we have the certainty of our being with him for eternity. We have the certainty of our prayers being answered as long as they are pr uh, prayed in accordance to his purposes and his will. So as we here in Wallace face the challenges of being faithful to God's command or Jesus' command for us to build his kingdom here in our community, we have these certainties that give us confidence as we move forward. Uncertain circumstances are just opportunities for us to prove God's promises are true as we love him and obey him. And we know that we have an exciting future ahead of us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the truth of your word and how it guides us and, and teaches us corrects us, and how it trains us to be your children, that is to do your will, accomplish your purpose. Give us a good week, Father, and thank you for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.